Now we go to the iodine metabolism. The iodine uptake is critical first step in a synthesis of thyroid hormone and is rate limiting step. So how is it done? So this is the thyroid cell, follicular cells here, which is encircling the colloid and lumen of the follicle. And this follicular cell has two surfaces. This is the basal surface and this is the apical surface. This is here is the apical surface and this is the basal surface against the blood vessel and capillaries. At the basal surface, we have two important structures. This is sodium iodide symporters and here is the TSH receptor. And at the apical surface, we have TPO and pandurin receptors. So this iodide pump, sodium iodide symporters, they pulse the iodine from the blood which is in the iodide form sodium iodide and takes it into the cell and maintains a concentration of iodide about 30 times more than the blood so this follicular cell has 30 times more iodine than its capillary just running over here next to it so then when iodine is taken up in the form of iodide and then it goes towards the apical surface where we have hydrogen peroxide and TPO thyroid peroxidase which convert it to iodine and then pandurin receptor here at the apical surface. So this is the lumen here and this is the apical surface, this lumen and this is the lumen and the apical surface pushes the iodine from here into the lumen. So what happens in the lumen that it attaches to the thyroglobulin molecule where at position 3 to form monoiodotyrosine. Then at position 5, the next iodine uh, goes to the pos position 3 and then to position 5, diiodotyrosine. So two diiodotyrosine unite to form T4 and one diiodotyrosine and one monoiodotyrosine unite to form triiodotyrosine. After that, once the iodine is attached to the thyroglobulin, it goes back into the follicular cells. From here, back into follicular cells because it's attached to the thyroglobulin and has to be detached from that to get out into the circulation. So when it comes into the cell, back into the cell, this is attached form, this goes to the lysosome. This comes here to the lysosome and then what happens in lysosome, this is lysosome, that it has protease. Protease breaks the bond between thyroglobulin and the future thyroxine. So once the bond is broken, this is thyroxine here, this thyroglobulin goes back into the lumen here, from here back to the lumen. So this cell extrudes the thyroglobulin out and that goes into the lumen and the thyroxine T3 and T4, they are extruded out into the circulation. So this is how it goes out this is how, so this is the iodine metabolism, the basal surface, we have this iodine, sodium iodine symporter, and this symporter is stimulated by TSH. TSH comes here at the basal surface, we have TSH receptors, so this attaches to the receptor and that stimulates it to increase the iodine uptake from the circulation and this TPO converts it into iodine form and then this iodine attaches to the three position, five position, three position of the thyroglobulin to make T3 and T4 and that then it comes back into the cell and then it goes into the lysosome where protease breaks the bond between thyroglobulin and a future thyroxine and then thyroglobulin goes back into the lumen and T3 and T4 go out into the circulation. Iodine and its trap. Trap is important because the follicular cells maintains an iodine concentration of about 30 times then the then its concentration in the blood. So this is the structure of the T3 and T4 and this is T3 in the middle here. Monoidotyrosine at T position, 3 position, then 5 position and 3. So T3 is 353, T3 form from MIT plus DIT and T4 by the DIT and DIT. So into the cell lysosome, then in the lysosome we have protease, that breaks the bond here between them 
thyroglobulin and the thyroxine. And this is the TSH receptor here where TSH comes and attaches and stimulate this sodium iodide symporters and then iodide is converted to iodine. The other organ that compete iodine, lactating mammary gland, salivary gland and kidney. So these three organs, are they also compete for iodine, but follicular cell of the thyroid maintains the concentration more than 30 times than the blood. A deficiency of the iodine, what does it cause? It causes endemic goiter and may cause cretinism. Cretinism causes mental and growth retardation and a mild iodine deficiency causes decrease in IQ. Another element, concomitant selenium deficiency may also cause mental malfunctioning so iodine and selenium so what are the effects of iodine deficiency on the thyroid gland iodine deficiency leads to goiter forming in enlarges the thyroid increases its size increases its blood supply its blood flow it causes hypothyroidism and cretinism iodine deficiency also stimulates the sodium iodide symporters so that it stimulates more efficient uptake and then we have active transport of iodine is stimulated by TSH as I already explained the TSH attaches to the TSH receptor and stimulates the sodium iodide symporter and sodium potassium ATP is also stimulated and its active transport is inhibited by ubane. So what's the treatment of the iodine deficiency? It's iodine, not thyroxine. Iodine deficiency corrected with iodine. And iodine binding to tyrosine because it attaches to the tyrosine molecules to make the thyroxine is blocked by antithyroid drug propylurethyl thyroxine.